things. And here what we're going to do is we're going to start to work with springs, right? We've worked with particles. Um, and we're going to move now into uh, the realm of using springs, which is a diff different type of physical geometry, right? So we're going to create some springs from lines and see how the springs work with kangaroo, right? So here's a kind of sketch of what we're going to be working with, right? Instead of just seeing particles fall, we're going to see um, these particles as attached to their original position bounce based on a spring. All right, so what, is, what exactly is a spring? Well, um, in physics and um, kind of for our purposes, a spring is just a simple linear mechanical object, right? And the ideal spring has no mass, right? It only, it doesn't bend, it just works in one direction, right? That's what um, is meant by linear mechanical object. All right, so um, we have to revisit one more uh, physical law, right, which um, was discovered by Hooke, right, and he said for springs as the exten extension, so too is the force, right. What that means is that stress is directly proportional to strain. So whenever we apply a force to a spring, that deformation is, e is directly proportional. It's equal to it. Right, so um, the equation for Hooke's law of elasticity uh, breaks down into F for force equals negative k x. K is your coefficient of your spring. So if the coil of your spring is really thick, right, it's a strong spring. It doesn't want to move very much. Uh, if it's a thin piece of wire, right, then it's going to be able to be extended very easily. So that's where the coefficient comes in. And x is the actual length of displacement, right? So if we have some mass that's being pulled down by gravity, right, the force here, um, labeled Fk, is equal and opposite uh, and directly proportional to how far this mass has moved down. So uh, one more diagram to try and make this a little bit clearer. If we have a spring, this is a kind of top view of a spring, that has a rest length here, we'll call the rest length R. The spring is at rest. It's not, no force is being applied to it. If we push the spring so that the rest length is larger than the current length, right, by a value of X units, the, the length of the spring is shortened and thereby the uh, directly proportional but opposite force is going in this direction, right? So this is a spring that's under compression, right? So if we move it x, if we multiply x uh, times negative k, the coefficient, we'll get the value for force. And likewise, in the opposite um, condition, if we stretch the spring, right, we're going to have a force that's um, in tension, pulling the spring back to its original rest length, right? Now springs are pretty easily uh, easy to understand because they're intuitive. They're a line. If we squish it, it gets it wants to go back to its original shape, and it may bounce, but it will relax back into that uh, original shape. And vice versa, if we stretch it like a slinky, it wants to go back to its original shape. Okay, so let's go ahead and use uh, use springs inside of kangaroo. All right. So um, in order to do this, we're actually going to continue to develop the file that we already worked on. Um, so if you need to, need to have the reference file open, you can use 1-1 springs, right? Just to give you a peek, this should look very familiar to what we just did, only with a couple new additions, all right? So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to close this. And I'm going to open the file that we were working on a second ago, and we'll keep going from there, right? All right, so here were our division points. Here's our um, force that we're going to call gravity. So now we need to implement springs, right? And the spring object in kangaroo is located under the forces tab. We're going to go for springs from line, right? So it says create Hooke's Law springs. So I'm going to drop that into the canvas. And let's take a look at what this is asking for. 
right? Um, the key things that um, are relevant to us and based on what we were, how we were describing springs a second ago, are the connection, which are the, the two points defining a line that connect the spring uh, start and end point, and the rest length, which is how long the spring wants to be, right? There are some other things that um, you can go further with if you want to continue to work with springs, um, plasticity, cutoffs, and damping, etc. cetera. Um, but really, all we need to be working with um, at a minimum is the connection and the rest line. Okay. So um, let's first work on making the connection. All right. So if these are my particles, right, and they're falling under what we're calling gravity, then uh, we need to somehow connect them back to their original point. Okay. Now, that seems pretty easy, right? We can connect the division points um, to themselves, but that creates a spring that has zero length to start. And um, Kangaroo doesn't like that, right? So we need to make an adjustment uh, to our file in order to actually have some length to connect. So what we're going to do is, um, after the division points, everything else that's in the file, we're going to slide over to the right a little bit. We're going to give ourselves some more room in here. Okay? All right, and I'm going to save this as my working file for the springs exercise, 1-1. All right? So let's create our connection, right? So what we really need is for the points to be slightly below their original position. That way we can have them start just below where they are located now and then connect them back to their original location. So what we're going to do is we're going to move these points down in the Z direction just a tiny bit. So in order to do so, let's grab um, from the vector tab and vector sub tab a unit Z again. And we'll take this unit Z, which is has a value of 1, and let's take the points and subtract this vector from them. So that way we'll move them down just a little bit. So we'll go to the math tab under operators, subtraction. We'll take our original division points and we'll subtract our z vector. Right? So now we have points that are just below our original points. All right? So then we can create a line from the original division point to the new uh, point that's slightly below it, right? So let's call these points that are coming out of the uh, subtraction, let's group them. Let's call them the offset points. All right, I'll slide this down, try and make some more room in here. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the curve tab and we're going to create our line from two points. All right, so the division points will connect to the offset points. All right, so this set of points, this is our spring connections, or these are our, our spring connections. Perfect. So then we can take these lines and just drop them directly into the connection input, right? And um, the spring object is now happy. It's light gray. And it's successfully created some springs, but it's going to assume that the rest length is going to be zero. So it's going to try and um, snap those points back to their original position. So in order to make this a little more interesting, uh, where we can, can control how long the spring actually wants to be, let's add a slider. Right? So I'm going to double click on my canvas and I'm going to say that the slider should be between 0.0, .0 less than the current value I want, we'll say 12, less than 25. Right? And we can connect the rest length into here. All right? And the slider will rename as our rest length. Right? And these are in units. This is a good uh, opportunity to talk about one of the questions we had a minute ago, which is, what units are we using here? Well, relative to Grasshopper, Grasshopper always inherits the units from Rhino. Um, 
So if whatever units I chose when I started my file, which in this case is meters, that's going to be the set of units that we're using uh, within the Grasshopper file. All right, so this says these springs can be 12 meters long. Right? Based on the size of my file, I think that's going to work out okay. So let's see, see how it works. All right, now, in order for the springs to now be a part of the simulation, we have to add them to the force objects. So I'm going to clean up this little portion here and try and condense my my elements that I have here working. And I need to be cautious of one more thing, um, which is that the forces, the unary force that I have, I don't want to apply it to these points that are here on the curve any longer. I want the unary force to be applied to the offset points. So I need to replace the input of the unary force as well as the particles All right, all of this can get changed so that the offset points are connected to the particle object, the unary force object, the length, list length object here, and then my spring connections are defined here. Okay, so now that I have all that, I can go into the force objects merge uh, object and add a new input by zooming in. If I zoom in and hit the plus sign, we'll now have another input. And we can take our springs and drop them into D3. Get rid of D4 there for um, keeping everything clean for the sake of that. All right, so now we have all of our force objects combined. I'm going to save. Let's um, release the timer. And now all of my particles are just falling, 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 falling. All right, now that's not what I wanted to happen, but that is what's supposed to happen based on the conditions that I've stated here. 